Thanks so much, Dominic, for joining us today. Uh, it's been uh, been quite the trip. I think you traveled what, about four thousand miles from yeah. Czech Republic. Um, I want to also take a minute to congratulate you again on being named CEO of Kensco. Thank you. Uh, we know uh, there's a lot of great, exciting things happening. We're going to talk a little bit about that today. Yeah. Um, but I uh, just want to take a minute and thank you, thank your team for all the great support that Kensco has provided. Um, so again, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. So one of the first things we wanted to talk about is kind of the, the future of the, the DXP market. Um, uh -huh. I yes. think a lot of us have been doing this for, for a long time. Um, I know you started in Kenico in 2007. I started at Extra in 2007. Just been doing this since like the 60s. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we, we've seen kind of the evolution of the web. We've seen the evolution of the, the technology driving the web um, over the years. Everything from the good old days when it was a simple, you know, hard-coded templates with a WYSIWYG editor to kind of the, the monolithic CMSs that wanted to do everything to today where it's more of that composable digital mm -hmm. experience platform. So I guess my, my first question is, where do you see the market going over the next couple of years? And, and more importantly, as the CEO of Kenico, how does Kenico fit into all that? Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, thanks for that. So I believe that there is like one uh, very big trend and that's um, that companies simply don't have uh, enough employees to, to work for them, right? And I mean, uh, some people say that we are, you know, uh, in front of the big financial crisis. And what does it mean? Two things, right? Like company will have to go and save some money in their budget. On the other hand, they do not ha have even today enough uh, power, enough capacity in their teams to do the work. So what does it mean for uh, DXP? Um, it means that actually you need to automate stuff. You need to be able to help yourself using artificial intelligence, right? But really in the use cases where it makes sense because artificial intelligence and machine learning today is such a huge buzzword. And, and uh, I've been actually two weeks back in London in one of the events. And uh, when I was introducing with some other CEOs, uh, everybody was like, well, we are AI company, which does blah, 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 right? So everybody's doing AI, but still, you know, uh, there are just few use cases where it actually does make sense to use AI, where, where really AI works and where, where really uh, AI helps you. And I think that this is uh, something what everybody needs to bring in into their companies to help really their employees to uh, to automate the things, to, to help them, to assist them with uh, whatever they need to do. The other big thing to together uh, with that or really connected to that is what is called a uh, low code, no code approach, right? Because the problem is that uh, within those companies, many people don't have enough developers today, right? And, and yep. you mentioned this composable DXP, right? There is the headless and, and multi-experience API first world. And all of these approaches are really heavy on uh, developers, right? Like you need to have a lot of developers in-house in order to pull this off. So, but many companies don't have them, right? Mm -hmm. So the problem is like, how can you overcome this? And the answer to this, in my opinion, is low code, no code, right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you could see the rise of the platforms like Zapier, for example, right? Like huge platform and, and really built on this idea of like connecting data uh, through simple, uh, simple workflows uh, yeah. and, and by business personas. And I think that in DXP, it's very important to make sure that all the business personas, which would be um, digital marketeers, content editors, are really mm -hmm. able to get their stuff done without relying always on developers. That's a great point and, uh, and certainly appreciate that. I think that that's a good transition into, you know, kind of a question I wanted to ask, which is the DXP market, Mm -hmm. uh, and, and specifically Kentico, um, you know, th there's, there's, there's a lot of changes, a lot of changes, customer experiences, customer expectations. Yes. Um, we know that Kentico, uh, as the market kind of knows the brand Kentico, it mm -hmm. actually split, right? So mm -hmm. it's Kentico now yes. and then, uh, 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 content. Yes. Um, so can you talk a little bit about the roadmap and what that roadmap looks mm -hmm. like in the next couple of years and, and, yes. and where, where, where you're heading? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, absolutely. So. Uh, I think a couple, couple of interesting uh, things. Uh, first of all, we are definitely moving away from uh, web-centric first world, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so web is no longer the king. And as I mentioned a couple of minutes uh, ago, there are 
many different channels, right? So like everybody and, and RDXP, uh, the way how we see this and, and where we invest a lot of money, a lot of effort and development resources is really to make sure that our solution uh, is multi-experience solution. So it can cover different channels, both from the perspective of publishing the information and also analyzing the data and, and making sure that there is meaningful engagement with the customers. And there is really this whole notion of the customer experience, right? Mm. So that's a that's a first big thing. The other big thing and where we try to invest also a lot of effort and energy is uh, really in this low code, no code approach. Mm -hmm. So actually business personas are still able to do the stuff, right? Because Again, when you take a look at this whole DXP, um, sorry, composable DXP movement and API first world, I mean, it's a great value proposition, but mainly for the technical folks yeah. and for the developers, right? Mm -hmm. So like uh, business personas are a little bit behind, uh, left behind. So our uh, approach is to make sure that we have all of these uh, visibility editors, if you will, and, and these builders for landing pages, mm -hmm. for emails, for whatever it might be, to make sure that actually at the end of the day, those marketeers can really get their jo job done. So these are two uh, biggest areas for us. And, and third one is, is definitely that automation and really like looking especially at artificial intelligence from the perspective of really where it does make sense, you know, and bring those uh, use cases and implement them in our solution. Um, no, that, that's really great feedback and it's really good to kind of see where you guys are heading. Um, you know, what's interesting is you've talked and you've used the term, and I love it, uh, uh, low code, no code several times. Um, and what's interesting is where Silvertech plays and where probably a lot of your partners play uh, in this space is that, you know, we personally have been seeing for a long time, smaller organizations, you know, that's an ideal situation, right? They don't have the development staff. They mm -hmm. don't have the engineers on staff. It's typically a marketing team. Yeah. They want simplicity. They want out of the box. What's been fascinating for us is over the last 12 months or so, or maybe a little bit longer, more and more larger you know, enterprise organizations, Fortune 100, Fortune 500 organizations are coming to the table with, with major rebuilds, multiple sites, dozens of sites in, in many cases, and they want complete out of the box functionality. And you know, certainly Kensco fits that mold really, really well. Yes. Um, gives them the modules and the components and everything they need to spin up sites fast. We're seeing organizations have a higher demand for go to market uh, in terms of speed. So you know, a lot of what you're saying where Kensco is going, I think, really fits that that niche uh, to to solve for those problems. So that's that's great to hear. Yeah, I, I guess it adds to that too. The other thing is, um, headless is awesome. I think for developers, developers love headless because they have. Mm -hmm all the freedom that they could ever ask for. They can do whatever they want. Yes. Um, but the problem is, it's not great for marketers. Marketers want to, be able to spin up landing pages quickly. They want to be able to spin up exactly. microsites and things like that. And with Headless, you're usually stuck with whatever templates the developer created for you. And you can't necessarily spin up things fast. So really the, the, the best of both worlds is a great API so developers can do the things they want to do, but then also have the tools so marketers can do the things they need to do. So it seems like, Kind of goes embracing both is what it, what yeah. it sounds like. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I, I definitely believe also that the, we call that hi hybrid approach that yes. really we try to take, you know, uh, the best from the both worlds, you mm -hmm. know, and I, I pretty much believe that there is definitely the space for API first, right? And mm -hmm. some organizations for some projects, they are really want to achieve like very specific uh, functionality. Yes. And this is where it makes sense, right? Or if actually, uh, you have, um, let's say, a website where you have really like huge amount of, tra of traffic, then actually those uh, statically generated sites definitely make sense, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and their API approach really makes sense, right? But there are also many other use cases. And what I believe is that like actually a couple of years back, like 2015-16, there was really this movement that, you know, and, and that was the rise of really this headless CMS market yep. uh, in those in those years. And there was this movement where everybody wanted to really uh, jump uh, to this movement and, and, and really they, they wanted to <clears throat> build everything in API first world. Mm -hmm. But those companies, I believe, realized how freaking expensive <laughs> this could be, right, yeah. for them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that they simply can't afford that, right, yeah. like for most of the things. Right. 
So they are. That's why I think that you see this trend that they are actually getting back and and they are really getting back down to earth, right? Because mm-hmm. I mean, we all experienced two years of of uh, COVID, right? Like so, uh, all the companies, you know, they don't have that luxury anymore, like just to experiment with with uh, everything. Um, so I think that you know they they really came to this realization that it's not worth it. Yeah. Uh, because you might achieve, you know, 1%, 5% better result and, and it's not worth it yeah. in most of the cases. So yeah. it's better just to, you know, let your business people to do things on their own, even though it's not maybe like technically, you know, perfect and you can't optimize like every single byte and stuff like that. Right? Mm-hmm. So it sounds like one of your differentiators is obviously the the combined approach, the hybrid approach. Um, yes. Beyond that, what do you think some of your other differentiators are yeah, as, yeah. as a CMS? So, so I think that uh, the real differentiator, uh, or there are like two, but in reality, it's it's one kind of combined. Uh, and I want to talk about things uh, like TCO, total cost of ownership, and time to market, right? Mm-hmm. Like really uh, take the platform, uh, connect with great partner like your, yourself, and then you know in in three six months. You have the project, you know, launched, and you immediately see the see the benefit. So that's that's definitely something where I believe uh, we always excel, and and I want to continue in that. Mm-hmm. And it's not just thanks to us, thanks to the product. It's also because of uh, you know companies like yourself, and because of the uh, really amazing ecosystem around ourselves. So so that's one thing. Um, and then the second thing is really customer care. And really making sure that, you know, we are not just product, but there is also a lot of services. There is uh, training, education. Mm -hmm. Uh, We do our annual conference called Kentico Connections to enable partners to help them really, you know, to educate themselves. And a lot of these programs around that. And I think that, you know, all of this combined and that also, you know, we really uh, are picky uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, who we work with and and what are the uh, digital agencies uh, who really use our platform and and who really build their business around that, and I think that this is really a great uh, combination that we really deliver real value uh, for better money than what other guys do in the in the market. You guys, uh, speaking of customer care, do you guys still plant a tree every time someone finds a bug? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we do that. Actually, actually, we gonna we gonna do the next iteration. I think in two weeks. Yeah. So okay. you are more than welcome to come. I mean, it's longer tree for you, but it's a very free. expensive tree. <laughs> we do thank you for coming out here. It's 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 always good to see you. Um, it's been great talking about kind of where you think the markets go in the future of DXP. Um, so we appreciate you coming this way, and um, look forward to talking next time too. Yeah. Thank you.